Hello everybody, Vincent Pleasant back again with a new video. Today we're gonna to do one of my favorite projects, one of my first projects that I ever did was a cutting board. Many uh, new woodworkers start out with cutting boards. They're good projects. For me, they're fun to make. And that's what we're gonna to do today. A friend of mine, the person who actually made this nice shirt that I'm wearing, Miss Sarah, uh, the owner of Madre's Glitz and Glam. She makes t-shirts, tumblers, and some other things. And you should check out her Facebook page. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, she's doing a fair in Washington Parish uh, next month. And she asked me to make some things and offered to sell them for me. I said, cool, no problem, appreciate it. So today we're gonna do some work on some cutting boards uh, using this wood over here. I already started milling some of the boards down over here and we'll continue that coming up. So like I said, I already started milling some of these boards over here. Uh, the first steps is to joint two sides, uh, one face and one edge. Um, I'm making edge grain cutting boards, which is this side right here is gonna be faced up and faced down. Um, and the first steps to that is to joint two sides. You want to have one face, one edge, perpendicular to each other at a 90 degree angle. Uh, once it's done correctly, uh, and I'll show you here in a minute, once I get this one done, uh, you can use a square and put the square on that face and edge and you won't be able to see any light. Uh, so this board, I'll, uh, I'll be honest with you, gave me quite a fit. Um, I don't know what I was thinking when I picked this board out uh, at the lumber dealer, but it was twisted pretty gnarly. Oops. Um, so I had to, use a different method of jointing two sides or joining flattening one face i had to use my planer over here with the sled once i got it flat now we're ready to get the other side uh perpendicular to the face that we just flattened so i'm going to use this joiner here and get started Take square here. Oop. Take the square here and look down the board from the face that we flattened and the edge that we just the edge that we just joined. And I don't know how well this will show on camera, but look in here. No light going through, it's just like that all the way through out the board. Very nice. So now that all these boards are jointed, what we'll do next is run them through the planer and flatten the top side so then we'll be ready to cut our strips. So next up, we're going to run this piece of Purple Heart through the planer and uh, the reason why we joint one face of the board is because the blades of the planer um, it's going to reference the bottom side uh, due to the amount of force that the planer uh, puts on the board as it goes through so we have to make sure the bottom side's flat because if it's not when we run it through it's still going to be not flat and it's going to give problems in our glue up so right now we're going to run it through the planer and i'm just going to do one board um, uh, on each step uh, to not bore you too, too much so 
gonna get uh, get started here and run this piece of purple heart through. Um, and you can see how kind of rough the lumber looks right now and just give you a sneak preview. That's the face once it joins it. So it, it really cleans up the board and makes it look a lot, lot nicer than uh, original. Okay, so I milled up all the boards. They're jointed, they're plain, they are ready to go, ready for stri uh, making strips. Now, I got my table saw set at an inch and three quarters. Um, the reason why is because I like my cutting boards to be a thick, hefty, butcher block style board. Um, so the final product is usually about an inch and a half at least. So I cut my strips at an inch and three quarters so that once I run them through, cut the strips and we turn them up because we're making a edge grain board, um, it gives me a little bit of cushion for running through the planer after everything's glued up so that the boards end up being at least an inch and a half. So I got the table saw set, the boards are good and prepped and time to start cutting some strips. All right, everybody, we're back. I got the board patterns all marked up. Um, this board actually, or this set of boards actually, is for a customer I already have. Uh, she bought one cutting board for me from Father's Day, and uh, her husband loved it so much, uh, she thought it would be a great gift for two other family members. So, these two are for her, and these three over here, are going to be for the fair uh, to sell. So we're here set up getting ready to glue. Uh, there's a couple things we have to check first. Uh, first, number one is I like to stand at the end of the boards, the set of boards, and look down them to see if there's any bowing, kind of like this or like this. Uh, sometimes it happens when you cut in the strips, it's okay, it's no big issue. But what we want to do is to make sure as we're looking down the board, making sure the bow goes like this towards the center, as opposed to like this, um, going outwards. So I already did them, but this one right here, actually this piece of hard of uh, curly maple actually needs to turn. And all we do is turn it like that. Press them back together, and now any bowed boards that we have, which it's one piece of walnut here, curly maple here, and that curly maple over here. So we got all those done. Now, with the help with the help of my lovely wife over here, we are going to uh, wipe them all down with acetone. Now. It's not normally something that's necessary for these, but I do it anyway, just out of habit. With your exotic woods, like your Purple Heart over here, your Purdue, your exotic woods have these oils at the surface, and it's good to wipe them down with acetone to pull those oils off the wood. And uh, that way, when we use our glue, the glue adheres better, gets into the wood, and uh, makes it for a better and tighter bond. So, me and her are going to wipe these down with acetone real quick and then get ready to glue them together. All 
All right, so now we're ready for glue. We got our Type Bond 3 wood glue, which is a waterproof glue, uh, which is my preferred glue for cutting boards. So now what I'm just gonna do is just slather it up with glue, use my God-given glue spreader, and spread the glue out, and then clamp them up. So, for the next few days, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let these sit. Um, I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, I'm gonna take all the clamps off and then let it sit unclamped for 24 hours. Um, just cause that's what it says on the instructions of the glue. And I've been doing this for a good many boards now and it's been a good good process. So I'm gonna let it stay in the clamps for 24 hours, take it out of the clamps, let it sit for 24 hours, and then we'll be ready to run it through the planer. Um, in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna wipe off this excess glue here in a minute. So be back in a few days. All right, everybody, we're back in the garage. It's been a few days. Uh, we got four boards glued up, two of which are ready to go through the planer today. The other two just came out the clamps today. I'm gonna let them sit another day to fully cure uh, before we run them through the planer. Uh, the first board is a hard maple and Paduke board. Uh, the second one is a curly maple and walnut. The third one is purple heart and hard maple. And the last one is Walnut, Hard Maple, and Paduke. Uh, the last one's a little bit thinner. It's some cutoffs that wasn't quite thick enough or tall enough to make a full size board. So that one's gonna be roughly an inch when it's done. And these other three will be about an inch and a half uh, when they're done. Um, they're big, a bit big at the moment. Uh, each of these are gonna make two cutting boards. Um, the first three should be about 21 inches long and the last one I believe is going to be about 18 inches long. So uh, actually, correction, uh, the first and the last one are going to be about 18 inches and the walnut and the purple heart boards will be about 21 inches long. So we got them up on our sled, the first two uh, that we're going to run through the planer today. They're on our planer sled to help keep them level uh, in case there's any rocking. There's a little bit on the walnut one, uh, not so much on the Paduke one. So we got them on our planer sleds. We're gonna send them through the planer and get ready with the next step. All right, so we got these, this set of boards nice and plain down, ready to go. Got that one plain down, ready to go. I'm gonna see what the time looks like um, and see if I could do any more today um, before I have to go to work. Uh, but the next steps is just gonna be to cut the boards to shape. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna check the time and 
Let's see if we can go on to the next step of cutting on the link. All right, so we got all of the boards planed down, level, flat. We're good to go on that. Uh, next up, we're going to cut all the boards to length. Uh, the thick boards we're going to set at 21 inches, roughly. And the other boards, I'm going to cut those in half, probably be about 18 inches a piece on those. So we're going to use our sled here, cut our boards. We're going to cut the ends off where the snipe is, and then cut our boards to 21 inches, and we'll go from there. Uh, what we're gonna do next is the shorter boards are ready for routing and sanding. I'm not gonna do any juice grooves on those, but our longer boards, the walnut and curly maple and the purple heart and hard maple, uh, we're gonna put juice grooves in those. So I'm gonna set up my juice groove jig and get ready to route those. So we're back here at the bench. I got the first board here in the juice groove jig. Uh, made us some three quarter inch plywood. I'll do a video uh, on how to make this here at the near future. Uh, this one's about had enough, so it's time to make another one. But the premise is the router here is gonna ride along these rails to make our juice groove. And uh, let's get it going. All right, so we got the first pass done. Looks pretty good. I thought I may have messed up here in the corner, but it's good. Um, so we got the first pass done. I'm gonna do one more pass. Just kind of a clean up slash just a little bit deeper on the juice groove. So we're just gonna get our bit depth set up a little bit deeper. And like I say, I'll go through this whole process once I make a video on a new jig. Get that on there and get ready to make one more pass. screws in here now you may notice there's a little burning discoloration in the corners um, it happens but I got a scraper uh, that I just ordered to try to get rid of that if that doesn't work then I'll just go with my uh, previous uh, method of getting rid of it which is with the Dremel tool so but anyway final product that'll be gone but juice grooves are in, looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna do the other board like this, the walnut and curly maple, put the juice groove in it, and then 
put the juice groove in the purple heart and hard maple boards. Uh, the boards with the Paduke, I'm gonna leave those without juice grooves. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock those out real quick off camera and we'll be back to route all the edges. All right, so we got our juice grooves done on four of our boards. Uh, now we're going to route the edges. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show on camera uh, doing the chamfer bit, the 45 degree chamfer bit on our thicker boards. And these thinner boards, these here, I'm gonna do a round over bit. I'm not sure what radius that I'm gonna do just yet. So I'm gonna do these two off camera. And right now, like I said, we're gonna do these thicker boards with our chamfer bit. And I'm a, I got it set about half of how much I want to cut right now, uh, how much I want to edge right now. So I'm gonna do all of them in one pass and then I'm gonna raise the bit up so it takes a little bit more off and do a second pass on all of them. So we're set up ready for sanding. Um, had a little issue with my sander. I think the brushes are starting to wear out in my sander that's in the table. So I did buy the rest of them by hand, no big deal. Um, I did uh, have a couple little defects in the some of the walnut and these two boards. Just fill those with star bond, no problem. And uh, now we're gonna sand. We're gonna do 80 grit, 120, 120 grit. Uh, 180 grit, 220, and then I'm gonna pause there to pop the grain. What that's gonna do is it's gonna raise up the little hairs of the wood um, once it dries, and then we'll knock it back down. So once you wash the board um, and let it dry, it won't be little rough hairs, rough feeling anywhere on the boards. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and get ready for finishing. All right, so we sanded it to 220 uh, before I went to work. Went to work, come back. Now time to get back to work in here. So we got them sanded to 220. I'm gonna raise the grain. I'm gonna spray them down with some water, just rinse them and uh, let the water dry. Uh, once it's dry, the little hairs of the wood will be standing up. We'll sand those back down at 320. Uh, that way, once the board gets washed by the customer, if they won't have any rough spots on their board or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and spray these down, let them dry, and then I'll sand them, like I say, to 320, and uh, we'll be back after that to do the finish. All right, so we're back for what I have been looking forward to since the beginning, applying the finish. Um, this is where you get to see the fruits of your labor, Get to see all those nice colors and patterns and textures and all the nice little nuances from your boards. Um, so I got my food grade uh, board conditioner here uh, that I mix up myself. It's uh, food grade mineral oil and food grade meat beeswax. Um, put together, heat it up and put in these containers. And which by the way, every cutting board that I make one of these comes with it. It's already conditioned, preconditioned, but you're gonna have this to take care of your board so it'll last you forever. Um, you can see everything that we've gone through to put this together and with proper care, which I have care instructions, and proper conditioning, 
this board will outlast your grandkids' grandkids. Um, so we're going to do that now. So I'm just going to take my conditioner, and as you can see, it's kind of like it's like a little goo, nice little goo. So we're just going to put some finger real quick and put it on the board. Now I'm going to apply this now and probably at least one more time and probably two to three times. Uh, what it's going to do is the oils is going to seep in seep into the boards and uh, kind of creates a chemical barrier for bacteria. And then the wax stays on top of the board and makes what I like to call a physical barrier. So we're gonna let it go in, seep in, and then add more uh, to build up that protection. And then once it's all done, um, you put water on it, anything like that, it's just gonna beat up, wipe right on off. And uh, you know when you're ready to when you need to put more conditioner on is when the water stops beating up. So gonna put a little bit more of this on now, like say the first couple, first time or two, it's gonna soak it up, soak it up until it don't soak up anymore. So got it on our board here and now we just wipe it in. And we look at all that green pattern and all the colors and niceness all come on out. Something about walnut and the green pattern of it that it just comes on out. That curly maple, all of that figure from the curly maple comes out. Look at that. Grab some more. Put it down. Get our juice screws real good. And the rest of the top. Oh, my little tea piece fell. And I don't know if you can see it very well on camera but it's just seeping right into the wood. Right into the wood grain. Put some more on our towel here. And we're gonna do all of our edges. Now the ingrain, it just soaks up that mineral oil tremendously. So we tend to have to put a little bit more on there. Just so you know in the future, if you get one of my boards, hey, you're gonna have to go a little heavy on the ingrains. But, like I said, it's no problem. And each of these boards, like I say, come with this conditioner. And then, in the future, if you run out, you can always purchase more. And now we're going to do the bottom. Get a good little bit there. It's, it's amazing, I'm sitting here thinking how we went from raw lumber, 
process it down. And now we have this nice work of art here. I have a few customers who tell me all the time they love their cutting board, they love their cutting board. And then I've had some who've gotten boards and given to someone for a gift. And they're like, man, I like that cutting board, but they won't use it. They say it's too nice. It's like a work of art. I mean, it's an incredible compliment to me, but I'm like, you know, I, um, thank you. But, you know, you can tell them it's okay to use it. Um, if you purchase one of my boards and, you know, you use it over the years and got a good bit of scratch marks or anything like that, it's fine. You can bring it back to me or ship it back to me and I'll sand it back down, refinish it and get it back to you. It's no big deal. No big deal at all. I am here to make sure all my customers are well taken care of, both before they purchase anything and after. So, got the first one done. Looks really nice. Bring it over here. Looks rather nice. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish putting the finish on the rest of these boards and uh, be back for a final reveal. Hi everybody, thanks again for joining me with this video to make these awesome cutting boards. I'd say they're a great beginner's project. It was my first project. They still sell well. Uh, like I say, these two, they're already sold. Um, but I want to thank Miss Sarah again from Madre's Glitz and Glam for making this shirt for me, another shirt for me, and inviting me to bring some of my products to her booth at the Washington Paris Fair. Uh, the fair is October 19th to the 23rd of October 2022 in Washington Parish. Um, I'm From what I hear, it's a pretty large fair. Lots of people, thousands of people come by. And I just wanna thank her for allowing me to put some of my products at, in her booth. Um, these cutting boards will be there, some charcuterie boards, some epoxy projects will be there as well. But thanks again for joining me. Thank you, Miss Sarah, and I'll see you all next time.